Hello everyone, thank you for joining us this evening for Tracing the Hidden Memories with uh, Maria Nalbantova. Uh, today we are going to talk about Maria's uh, practice, different projects and the main elements in her uh, works, collecting the objects from different locations uh, such as nature, libraries, flea markets, warehouses and other random places she visits uh, and also tracing memories, either personal or, co or collective, in different projects that she has been working so far. We also talk about this uh, pop-up show that we have later in this conversation. Before we start, I would like to give you a short introduction to Maria's practice. Maria Nalbantova works in the field of contemporary visual arts. She experiments with various media and techniques such as drawing, collage, found objects, installation, video, and performance. In 2015, she graduated with a master's degree from the National Academy of Arts, Sofia, Department of Book and Printed Graphics. She is a winner of Baza Award for Contemporary Art in 2020. Her artistic practice is focused on the idea of hygiene that spans beyond the body and inhabits the territories of the human mind. In addition, she seeks to construct a speculative reality where nature and the artificial intervene, foregrounding critical, social, political, and environmental issues. Very often, she works with found objects and all the traces of time they carry. So let's just start with, uh, with your recent project uh, that you started in Salzburg 2021, the bookmarks, where you had your first exhibition of bookmarks. And I think this is the starting point of the show that you are seeing here today, the bookmarks in New York. And it's kind of an ongoing project that uh, she's doing during her residency in New York. But tell us more about this project. Like I know that you were collecting objects for a long time. Hello everyone, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mariam. Thank you, Residency Unlimited. I made uh, the bookmark project in the Hohen Salzburg Fortress where I was a fellow of the International Summer Academy. I spent some time in the library of the fortress where I started to find notes, tickets, drawings, pieces of paper left between the pages of the books in which I looked for. These bookmarks marked a place in a book that the reader could easily return to later. And from our present perspective, we can look at uh, these objects as artifacts, links between the bookmark and its book, the bookmark and the reader, the reader and the book, the time and the place, fact and fiction, and they leave a mark, a clue, a trace of the person who decided to stop at a certain page. They are traces of time and place, but also traces of personal memories. They are fragments of possible story left behind by accident or consciously until the next uh, reader finds them. And I found 20 bookmarks in the library of the International Summer Academy and created an installation with them uh, in one of um, the spaces in the fortress. Uh, in all 20 books from which I extracted the bookmarks, on the same pages where I found a bookmark, I left a note about my project and they're waiting for the next reader. Okay, now I would like to talk about the next project, which is also related to book, but here you actually make a book. And for this book, uh, you use it, it's called the Papa Past in 2017. You use a specific children's book format and also an image of a monument from a totalitarian time in Bulgaria, which is taken from a photo book, Forgot, uh, Forget Your Past, that I know in this uh, project you collaborate with a photographer, you will talk about it. And while, for me, while in the bookmarks and other projects that we are going to talk about, you use like personal memories or kind of trigger the um, audience imagination. 
in this project you uh, work with collective memories of like a specific group of people that they can relate with this topic so i can say that your approach is a bit different like instead of again like uh, triggering like personal memories you are playing with collective memories tell on, tell us more about like the idea and formation of this project and also about the persian carpet that uh, uh, and the cover that i really yeah, i'm really interested in in the pop up past project um, i'm working with uh, the um, photographer nikola mikhov and uh, his, photogra uh, his uh, photographs uh, exploring the uh, communist era monuments in Bulgaria. Uh, there are various aspects through which we can read and learn more about these monuments. Forgotten past, constructed memory, unclear present. Uh, traditionally, at the opening ceremonies of the monuments, the official delegation is placed on the ground covered by Persian carpet. At the same time, the practice of putting the problems under the carpet is a very famous phrase and practice in Bulgaria. They are well covered, we don't see them, but they are still there. So, uh, some, uh, so yeah, and the, the format uh, of uh, that work, um, the pop-up book, uh, I grew up with uh, some pop-up books that we uh, we had in our house. So uh, I remember it's in the early 90s, but uh, uh, also in the 80s, 70s, that uh, fairy tales from uh, uh, translated from the Soviet Union uh, um, in Bulgaria. Uh, so that format of pop-up books were really famous. And on the one hand, yes, we speak about the memories uh, uh, and uh, my personal memories, my personal memories from that kind of books. But at the same time, we speak about monuments and that constructed memories. And uh, those monuments, they have really... Um, um, now, when we speak uh, for for them nowadays, they are, uh, we speak about um, uh, some place where we, sh where we can rethink our, our past mm -hmm. and uh, to try to deal uh, with it somehow. Mm -hmm. So some of them, um, they don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, more of them are in uh, really bad conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, now there are a lot of conversations about uh, what we should do with them. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we should move or uh, replace. Or, but uh, that conversation is really important because through it we can learn more about uh, the so about our past, of mm -hmm. course. But at the History, same time. Yeah. But at the same time, how to uh, how to make uh, so how to live mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. without uh, repeating some, mm -hmm. some mistakes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was very interesting when you talk about like these memories of childhood and this format of pop up and how you kind of uh, combine all these experiences with the history of uh, like Bulga Bulgaria through, uh, in that specific time. And also it's very interesting uh, that you think about like uh, remembering and also like forgetting how we, and also tracing those histories in this book. And, uh, but here I would like to talk about your next project. So in, in the previous project, we talked about this like uh, politic uh, um, uh, topics, but now in this one, the new other project, Drought, you talk about this environmental crisis, which I believe it's not different and separated from all these 
politic issues. But I would like to know more about this one. And in this statement, you mentioned that uh, the drought is focused on the question of how a protest turns into a ritual or how a ritual transforms into a protest. So I know that collecting object is a ritual for you in your everyday life, but I would like to know more about this specific project and the story behind that. Like why I know that you collect objects and make soaps with that project, but how did it start? The project Drought um, consists of several objects in a video. Uh, the video is rather a demonstration video where I made the soap blocks in four locations next to water bodies, a lake or a river, a puddle in a depopulated village, and the sea. And in each of uh, the places, the drought is uh, caused by corruption. Mm -hmm. And of course, all that results in an environmental crisis. So I was, let's say, inspired for this project from... Uh, um, from uh, some disaster that happened in uh, um, 2019 in um, um, in one town close to Sofia uh, called Pernik. Uh, so the people there were they um, did uh, they didn't have water mm -hmm. for a year because corruption mm -hmm. and uh, every day they were. Uh, outside on the streets mm -hmm. yes. protesting mm -hmm. but in one moment they started to to do um, um, rituals mm -hmm. so because the protest doesn't work uh, something else should be done mm -hmm. um, and uh, so yeah for for the soap uh, preparation I used uh, the water from the place mm -hmm. oil sodium hydroxide which is the most uh, famous recipe for for, uh, for soap preparing mm -hmm. um, and uh, some ingredients from the surrounding area for example the soap from the seaside uh, consists of sand algae and concrete because of the huge illegal construction in that place on the seashore which is a symbol of many more quite similar occasions uh, in that uh, per, uh, particular place the building was built on the seashore as protection from erosion mm -hmm. so i collect I can say I, I, I am collecting objects and images that carry mm -hmm. traces mm -hmm. and memories because they open the possibility for many conversations and mm -hmm. meetings. At the same time, I'm really interested in uh, uh, the topic of hygiene, uh, which is not limited to the body, but also mm -hmm. the mind. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I'm interested in moral hygiene. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And now that you're talking about these uh, rituals and like hygiene beyond the body, uh, I think we can talk about the other project cleans in 2020. And um, again, consists of uh, um, objects, let's say devices and uh, video but rather a demonstration video uh, where one can see how all the devices are working. So CLEANSE is framed as a cleansing program um, in three phases, cleansing feet, hands and face. In, in each phase uh, we have uh, um, soaping, brushing, washing and wiping. But uh, for each phase, for example, so uh, the first phase it uh, consists of uh, the compound, it's uh, soap and asphalt. Because the huge, uh, again, this work is uh, related with uh, corruption, lack of dignity and abuse of power. Um, so each phase we see um, the feet cleansing, the compound of soap and asphalt after the washing it turns into, the water turns into a water with golden particles. 
because so they are not completely washed away or they're still there they're still there it's like alchemy mm -hmm. situation and I'm using for uh, the project uh, uh, natural materials as uh, like a stone, wood, but at the same time uh, synthetic fibers, mm -hmm. white tiles, and the idea of cleanliness, which is the it's not exists. So that the 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 uh, the, mm, the like the cleanliness are, as an iconic uh, uh, situation. Just gonna hold a bit. And these are the objects that you made. And this is the second phase. Do you want to talk about this too? The second the finger, phase? The fingerprints, the traces that we leave. Yes, the, the second phase, uh, the, it's compound of soap and fingerprints. And uh, it's about, the, of course, the, the traces that we leave and uh, uh, the, the idea how we, can, uh, he, how we can make uh, that traces hidden. Mm -hmm. And the third phase, it's uh, with a compound of soap and mirror, so it's about the um, image of the power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the, uh, you talk about the traces that the fingerprints and the traces that we leave. Your other project, Dry Hands, it's kind of different. You kind of collect this. Let me just go to that. You go this project in 2019 that you collect these different objects and as you said this uh, project is uh, like draw our attention to understand our connection with the concept of labor how do we think about it and also the other project we can uh, talk about both of them now because they are both about labor and our understanding of that the post tools so do you want to start with dry hands maybe and then? Um, dry hands, uh, I'm using in that uh, installation used gloves mm -hmm. with a lot of traces uh, that uh, one can smell or see. And uh, it's about our responsibility because their uh, dry hands, their hands which are uh, n no clear either no no uh, no they're protected mm -hmm. I mean with that that with that gloves but there are a lot of traces of uh, um, there are a lot of memories and traces so we can imagine different stories of course but uh, it's project about uh, our responsibility, how or in which way we are using all the tools that we are using. Mm -hmm. And the, the connection that you are making between the dry hands and post tools. And these are the post tools. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, clear because in post tools I'm using, um, I was invited uh, uh, from uh, for you and your customers company and uh, the curator Victoria Draganova to create an uh, exhibition in their new office which is a working place in Sofia and uh, I, I told about uh, um, about uh, labor but in a digital context so I decided to work with uh, used uh, um, materials and to working tools um, like uh, the basic one like uh, um, the starting point was stone and woods and then uh, I, I used like wrenches or clamps or 
um, of different uh, simple but base tools that we are using. And uh, for me, it was important to think uh, about uh, the, um, the, how we are connected, what kind of tools we are using to be connected. So I made uh, um, works. Uh, I made work uh, with uh, different tools uh, in different combinations. So they're a bit uh, uh, absurdistic. Their relation, their connections are mm -hmm. uh, absurdistic, but they they, they can uh, ask somehow a lot of questions how we what what kind of tools we are what using is, what is in in what in mm -hmm. which way mm -hmm. and you also have this concept of hidden memories even in this i mean in all of your projects as you collect objects yes are, because they are used mm -hmm. yeah they already mm -hmm. uh, made a lot of i don't know how <laughs> but we can Okay, I was going to ask you to talk, maybe a walkthrough or talking about this ongoing project. But before that, if you have any questions, maybe we can wrap up this talk. And then Maria can explain more about this Bookmarks project in New York, and which uh, is kind of a collaboration with uh, Teo Betin. They found objects, so this is something similar in their uh, project that they both work with found objects. And uh, if you don't have any questions, I think, yeah. Thank you, Maria, for the great works. I just have one question. Um, I hope I didn't overhear it. Um, when you said, when you're walking this, this video, where you're walking on the river, and you said, because of corruption, I'm interested in what, what happened, like what, what kind of situation that happened uh, that corruption was the reason for the drought. drought. For the drought. Uh, yes, and the other one, because you in your works and exhibitions and this uh, exhibition that was also involved in, I think, because you're drawing this question of corruption, uh, using the power and um, the, you know, corruption in that region is not just like a problem, it's a mode of survival. So how was the, the like, I'm just thinking of the public, you know, if there was some public that is not an artistic public, mm -hmm. if they had some commentary or like, like if, there, if, if it was recognized mm -hmm. as a, you know, woke uh, questions or something that should, you should reflect on, not just like, um, being abused by corruption, but also participating in it. So for drought, uh, for example, um, in each location there is a particular story. And here we see uh, this should be a um, protection wall for like a strengthening the, uh, the, the seashore from erosion. But in a, but it's clear that it's a hotel, so it's uh, illegal. And um, finally, the, yeah, it's clear that it's illegal, so it will be destroyed. So some money was washed. Exactly. It's like yeah. a washing uh, money system. Uh, and yes, in each uh, of the locations, the drought. It's uh, part of the society, or it's part of the uh, political um, regime, let's say. Uh, and for plants, uh, the questions... So yeah, the work uh, could be understood in many ways, because if you don't know the context, if you don't have any information for the context, it, it could be something else, but uh, um, that's why it's uh, interesting to work with all that. Uh, with for me, it's important to open a conversation for, for uh, those things, and um, uh, those 
all that three phases are significant somehow. And uh, that um, cleansing program is pra it's kind of practice. It's uh, the continuation of uh, another project of mine, uh, multiple used, and because, as uh, you see in the title, multiple used, uh, uh, the project could be transformed. Uh, so between the postules and uh, pop-up past, you mean the connections? If you of, see a connection, because for me. I'm a Bulgarian too, so I'm much older, so for me these hidden layers of past are still that kind of invisible but there and yeah. important people. And at the same time I see that all the coding, the digital, the mysterious what's mm. happening behind, supposedly mysterious what's yeah. happening behind our backs. Um, uh, it's also there, the physical body, so uh, I see a connection for myself there, but I was asking if you see a connection there. I think, uh, mm, yes, of course, because uh, it's uh, like a process, um, my practice, uh, so the next work it's coming because uh, something else was before, so definitely there is a connection uh, and uh, all that hidden memories and um, um, at the same time all the, the memories that are like a structure memories with the monuments I mean um, and uh, the, the past that it's not so clear but at the same time the future, which is also not so predictable, yeah, it's uh, like a hidden as well. Uh, and that um, traveling through the, the uh, present and past, and uh, I think uh, it's important to see all that traces and to try to read them and uh, to try to learn through all of that traces. Thank you. Yeah, for me it feels also like reclaiming it for the now, for the body, for the physical experience. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, I just want to ask about if you can talk more about the notion of play in your work and in your process. Yes, uh, thank you for the question and uh, uh, it's, uh, this is really interesting because from psychological approach the idea of clean hands is uh, make a sensation of clean mind. So, uh, if, yeah, nowadays due to the pandemic we are speaking about uh, um, yeah, how we should wash our hands we receive instruction for it uh, and it's not only to protect ourselves but also to protect the people around us so it's again about our responsibility to all, all the people uh, and there are a lot of examples in the literature in many different aspects about the, the feeling of clean 
hands and clean mind and what's mean that, of course, and uh, how we are cleaning our hands or uh, with whom, <laughs> uh, yeah, or what kind of uh, devices or tools or socks or uh, what we are using, like a tool. Uh, so for your second question about uh, that uh, playful element with all that uh, fragments in the pop-up past, uh, like image pictures from that monuments and here, uh, they are quite different because uh, uh, for the monuments, uh, it's a collective memory, as you mentioned, which is a um, specific collective memory. But the postules, it's work which is more open. It could be everywhere, because all of us, we use some tools. Even if the lab nowadays we are speaking, the labor, the idea, yeah, it's different, it's changes all the time and um, it's not the same, of course. But uh, there are some basic tools that we are using and the idea of tools. And we need tools, otherwise it's not so easy <laughs> to fix our problems <laughs> or not only problems, but yeah, to build something, to create some ideas. And, uh, mm, and, and yes, of course, uh, the question how we use them. So yes, the, there are some common, there are some things that are somehow re in relations, but at the same time, it's uh, different. It's something specific in each of uh, the projects. Yes. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you for sharing your process. Um, I had a question about functionality, especially when it comes to the soap piece. Yeah. Um, I, I thought that it was like, I mean, there infused a level of like satire and like humor. And the fact that these soap was like larger than one is able to like actually move around. Can you comment a little bit about that decision? The, uh, sorry, just uh, if yeah, I'm not uh, mistaken to. Um, can you repeat the yeah, sure. how we can use them? Yeah, I, I think especially the big ones. Yeah, the big scale. Are they functional? I mean, you ask people to use them. Um, Is that the same? Yeah, that's essentially. So, as part of uh, the exhibition, they were as an object, but uh, of course, they it's uh, soap, so it could be usable in a way. But I didn't uh, present them. Uh, in that way to uh, like in interaction interactive object for the audience uh, but it's a good uh, idea I really want to work uh, in a way to, to yeah to involve the, the audience in that cleaning uh, well, I actually thought that process it was quite interesting that you, you weren't able to participate because it kind of made it seem like that process was futile um, and that like the cleanliness was in concept, uh, like an aspiration, but not a reality. Um, so I thought that, that was quite interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, I just wanted to thank you for sharing your work uh, with uh, carpet, uh, because it especially spoke to me. <coughs> in sense, uh, well, because I'm interested in how trauma uh, leaves a trace in the body. And this particular work especially helped me to make this kind of connection, you know, with the part of a statue being placed under the, under the, the carpet. And I was also wondering if also this connection with, you know, post-communist trauma and body, is that something that you're also interested in, like, in a very particular way for individuals? Well, I'm from Poland, so I also was, you know, the, of the same background, but maybe similar, right? Yeah. Um, yes. 
always there, our bodies occupy some space. So this is already a position. So, of course, I'm really interested in uh, um, when uh, we speak about hygiene, the first that arrives to us is uh, a body hygiene. Maybe. And then it's coming, the moral hygiene or the idea of hygiene of uh, our mind. Uh, and uh, the relation between the body and uh, the place and how we occupy the place and what's the position of the body, it's really important and it's really interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, or so comments? <laughs> okay, so if you want... Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I've said this to you already, but I think it's nice to say in front of everyone that I think it's nice that you have quite fresh vocabulary, because I feel like often, especially in Anglophone contexts, certain words they pick up, and then everyone starts using them to talk about the same thing. So it's nice that you have your own, own words, that you're kind of communicating something quite complicated, but it's very relatable in a kind of embodied um, and kind of very tangible way, but at the same time, it, it has the potential to offer multiple different tangents that are maybe relevant to different political contexts. Yes. So I think it's like beautifully done. That's Thank you. Thank you.